what is the truth? Steve Schaefersman, professor in geology and paleontology at Rice University. Well, early in the work here, Professor Emmy Clark, tenured professor in the advanced degrees at University of Illinois, a tremendous creation, is now home with the Lord. Emmy Clark came to Glen Rose 32 times to excavate with me. He and I were excavating on the banks of the Paluxy. We'd found a series of tracks. Steve Schaefersman came up. It was a little, the bank was a little higher at that point. And he, he walked up, looked down, said, Hey, I understand. I said, Hi, Steve. He said, I understand you've discovered some real nice new dinosaur tracks. I said, That's correct. They're beauties. Come take a look at them. I said, Oh, by the way, Steve, uh, I'd like for you to see these tracks Professor Clark and I are excavating. I never excavate alone anymore. I want to make sure there's no tampering at all. I said, I want you to see these tracks among these dinosaur tracks. Dr. Schaefersman said, are you going to tell me that you have found some human footprints among them? I said, that's exactly right. Come look at them. He looked out across the river. I was there. This is gospel truth. Looked out across the Paluxy for about two minutes. Then he said, all right, uh, well, I'll see you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. And he turned and walked off. He never looked down. He could say in a court of law, I visited Baugh and Clark's excavation site. I saw some beautiful dinosaur footprints, but I never saw anything faintly resembling a human footprint. And he could say that because he refused to look, but he was at the scene. Okay. So that's what we're facing. That's all right. You came and you want to know the truth, don't you? All right, let's go beyond this. That was Dr. Schaefersman who wrote that in Journal of Ge Geological Education. Professor Stephen Stanley voiced a similar opinion. He wrote, there is an infinite variety of ways in which since 1859, that's when Charles Darwin uh, introduced Origin of Species by natural selection and the favored human races. Did you know that today they only report half the title that Charles Darwin wrote? His title had to do with favored human races assigning supremacy to the Aryan race, all others being inferior. How many knew that? Only a handful. His book was racist, and that was the basic purpose for writing it. And we have, you came to the right place, we have the original letter. It's on display in the central case. Written by his son. His son was the father of euthanasia. We have his original letter. He wanted to make sure that was not mentioned in it. We have his original letter. Oh, by the way, we have the original letter written by a little Jewish fellow about that tall, defending a, a theory he came up with that just happens to dominate uh, scientific thought on the cosmos and how it operates but he built on another fellow's work named uh, Sir Isaac Newton. But this, this little fellow uh, wrote about, what was his name? Albert Einstein. And what did he write about? Theory of relativity. We have in the case back there, it's under security, we have in the case back there the original letter Albert Einstein typed on his personal typewriter in German defending his theory that was his very first defense of his theory of relativity. So I have it turned to the back side where his signature is, and uh, you can see it. So that brings me to this. Stanley wrote, there is an infinite variety of ways in which since 1859, Charles Darwin release of his theory, 
the general concept of evolution might have been demolished. Hmm. Consider the fossil record, a little known resource in Darwin's day. And then uh, Dr. Stanley continued to write any topsy-turvy sequence of fossils, anything out of place, would force us to rethink our theory, yet not a single one has come to light. Well now, what about the Glenrose evidence that man and dinosaur lived contemporaneously? They just ignore it altogether. And I'm not the only one involved, and we have some tremendous scientists involved in this research. I'm just an incidental guy. As Darwin recognized, a single geographic inconsistency would have nearly the same power of destruction. Wow. So our comment, it is clear that evidence of contemporaneous existence of man and with dinosaurs would essentially destroy the theory of macroevolution.